The sinking of the RMS Titanic has become legendary, symbolizing both luxury and tragedy in the history of maritime disasters. It has been more than a century since the night of April 15, 1912, when the once unsinkable RMS Titanic sank beneath the icy North Atlantic. The legend of the Titanic's tragic voyage remains one of the most well-known and terrifying accounts of human ambition and arrogance at sea. The story of the Titanic, brought to life in innumerable books, movies, and documentaries, has universal appeal that goes beyond the ship's actual historical significance. The crash has evolved into a symbol of human aspiration, tragedy, and the never-ending pursuit of truth. This video sets sail on an investigation into the unknowns, debates, and known facts of the tragic maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic. To learn what happened to the RMS Titanic, we will go into the depths of history and examine everything from the ship's construction to the night of the tragedy, from the disputed hypotheses that have evolved over the years to the grim truths we have unearthed. Come along with us as we venture into the center of a timeless mystery, the Titanic's maiden voyage, the Titanic's construction and launch. The story of the Titanic begins with its conception in the early 20th century. This marvel of engineering was the brainchild of the White Star Line, a British shipping company seeking to outdo its rivals by building the most luxurious and technologically advanced ship ever conceived. The Titanic, along with her sister ships, the Olympic and Britannic, was part of a grand plan to dominate the transatlantic passenger trade. The construction of the Titanic commenced on March 31, 1909, at the Harland and Wolfe shipyard in Belfast, Northern Ireland. It was a monumental undertaking, with thousands of skilled workers laboring tirelessly for over two years to bring this massive vessel to life. The Titanic stood as a testament to human achievement, measuring a staggering 882 feet in length and weighing approximately 46,000 tons. The ship's launch on May 31, 1911 was a momentous occasion, drawing crowds of spectators to witness the behemoth's descent into the River Lagan. As it gracefully slid into the water, the Titanic symbolized the zenith of British engineering and design. Little did anyone know that this majestic ship would soon become synonymous with one of the greatest maritime disasters in history. The Opulence and Luxury of the Ship From the moment passengers boarded the Titanic, they were enveloped in opulence and luxury. The ship boasted an unparalleled level of comfort and extravagance, catering to the elite of society. Lavish amenities included grand dining rooms adorned with ornate chandeliers, a swimming pool, a gymnasium, a Turkish bath, and even a squash court. First-class passengers reveled in spacious cabins replete with private bathrooms and the finest furnishings money could buy. The opulence extended to the ship's dining experiences. The Titanic's first-class passengers enjoyed gourmet meals, and the Grand Staircase, with its intricate woodwork and sweeping design, became an iconic symbol of the ship's luxury. The anticipation surrounding its maiden voyage. There was a buzz of anticipation as the Titanic left Southampton, England, for its maiden voyage to New York City. The ship's inaugural trip was supposed to be a triumphant display of British engineering and naval power, and it was hailed as the supreme achievement of Atlantic sailing. Passengers from all walks of life, from the wealthiest elites to hopeful immigrants seeking a better life in America, embarked on this historic journey. The Titanic's departure on April 10, 1912, marked the beginning of a voyage that was anticipated to be a symbol of progress and luxury. The Night of Tragedy The night of April 14, 1912, as the Titanic set sail on its first journey, was enveloped in unusual peaceful surroundings. 
Even though icebergs are common in the North Atlantic at this time of year, the sea was oddly calm. The elegance of the ship and the comforts it offered were much appreciated by the passengers. It was a moonless night and the stars shined brightly above the water. The Titanic glided through the frigid waters, its passengers largely unaware of the lurking danger. On board, the ship's crew diligently maintained their watch, with lookouts stationed high in the crow's nest. Little did they know that this tranquil night would soon descend into chaos and tragedy. The collision with the iceberg. The turning point came at 11.40 p.m. ship's time when Frederick Fleet, the lookout in the crow's nest, spotted an iceberg dead ahead. He quickly sounded the alarm by ringing the bell and communicating with the bridge. First Officer William Murdoch ordered the ship to be steered hard to port and the engines to be reversed, but it was too late. The Titanic's starboard side scraped along the massive iceberg, creating a series of devastating punctures below the waterline. The collision went largely unnoticed by many passengers, who remained blissfully unaware of the impending catastrophe. The Titanic's fate had been sealed, and it would prove to be a disastrous encounter with one of nature's frozen giants. The Initial Response and Communication In the immediate aftermath of the collision, chaos began to unfold. Crew members rushed to assess the damage, while passengers were jolted from their reverie. The ship's distress signal, a series of rockets fired into the night sky, signaled to nearby vessels that the Titanic was in dire straits. The crew swiftly began communicating with the passengers, initially downplaying the severity of the situation to prevent panic. Lifeboats were prepared, and passengers were instructed to don life jackets and assemble on the decks. The initial response was marked by a sense of disbelief and confusion, as many passengers could not fathom that the unsinkable Titanic could be in peril. However, as time passed and the reality of the situation became apparent, a sense of urgency and desperation set in. The night of April 14, 1912, would forever be etched in history as the night the Titanic met its tragic fate, and the subsequent hours would be marked by heroism, tragedy, and ultimately, the loss of a ship once deemed invincible. sinking and rescue, the ship's gradual sinking. After the Titanic struck the iceberg, a slow but inexorable process of sinking began. The damage inflicted by the collision caused the ship to take on water in several compartments, compromising its buoyancy. As the hours passed, the Titanic's bow began to sink lower into the frigid waters of the North Atlantic, while the stern rose into the air. This gradual sinking of the Titanic had a profound impact on the ship's passengers and crew. It meant that the available time for evacuation and rescue was limited, and the enormity of the situation became increasingly evident. The ship's lights flickered and then went out, plunging the Titanic into darkness as it continued its descent into the icy depths. On the 14th of April, 1912, Titanic struck an iceberg at 11.40 p.m., ship's time, on her maiden voyage, 
and sank two hours 40 minutes later on the 15th of April 1912. The rescue efforts and the role of nearby ships. As the Titanic's distress signals pierced the night sky, nearby ships responded to the call for help. The Carpathia, a Cunard line vessel, was the first to reach the stricken liner. Carpathia's crew embarked on a heroic rescue mission, plucking survivors from lifeboats in the icy water. Other ships, such as the Californian and the Mount Temple, had been in close proximity to the Titanic but failed to come to her aid in time. The controversy surrounding their response, or lack thereof, remains a point of contention and speculation among historians and Titanic enthusiasts. Twenty miles separated the SS Californian from the sinking Titanic. The captain noticed the flares, but he assumed they were commercial rockets and not signals of danger. The radio operator on the Californian went to bed. Thus, the ship only learned of Titanic's messages the following morning. However, when they arrived, they discovered nothing but bodies and debris. The rescue efforts were marked by acts of extraordinary bravery as crew members on the lifeboats rowed back to the sinking ship to retrieve survivors from the freezing water. The Carpathia's timely arrival undoubtedly saved many lives, but the tragedy still claimed a staggering number of victims. The loss of life and survival rates. The sinking of the Titanic resulted in a heartbreaking loss of life. Out of approximately 2,224 passengers and crew aboard the ship, more than 1,500 perished in the icy waters. The survival rates varied widely depending on factors such as class, gender, and access to lifeboats. First-class passengers had a significantly higher survival rate compared to those in second and third class. Women and children were prioritized in the evacuation, leading to higher survival rates among them. Men, particularly those in steerage, faced grim odds of survival. The loss of life on that fateful night was a stark reminder of the need for improved safety measures and better preparedness in the face of maritime disasters. The sinking of the Titanic is not only a story of tragedy but also one of courage and sacrifice, as passengers and crew faced unimaginable challenges in the icy waters of the North Atlantic. It is a somber chapter in history that continues to evoke deep emotions and contemplation to this day. Controversial Theories The Theory of Inadequate Lifeboats One of the most controversial aspects of the Titanic disaster centers around the adequacy of lifeboats on board. The Titanic was equipped with only enough lifeboats to accommodate around 1,200 passengers and crew far fewer than the total capacity of the ship. This fact has fueled significant debate and criticism over the years. Some argue that the White Star Line, seeking to maximize passenger deck space and avoid clutter, failed to prioritize passenger safety by not providing enough lifeboats. The debate over the ship's speed. Another contentious issue is the debate over the Titanic speed on that fateful night. Some experts believe that Captain Edward Smith and his officers were pushing the ship to its limits in an attempt to break speed records and arrive in New York ahead of schedule. The high speed, they argue, reduced the ship's reaction time and made it more challenging to avoid the iceberg once it was spotted. Others contend that the speed was within a reasonable range and that the collision was primarily due to the iceberg being spotted too late. Claims of inadequate binoculars in the crow's nest. Among the crew members stationed on the Titanic was a lookout in the crow's nest whose role was to spot obstacles in the ship's path. Controversy surrounds claims that the binoculars needed for this task were not readily available. Some argue that if binoculars had been accessible to the lookout, they might have spotted the iceberg sooner and allowed for more time to take evasive action. This theory has sparked debate about whether a lack of binoculars played a role in the disaster. The Role of Human Error and Miscommunications Human error and miscommunications are integral parts of the Titanic tragedy. 
the ship's officers and crew faced a series of critical decisions in the moments leading up to the collision, from steering directions to engine orders. Misunderstandings and misinterpretations among the crew have been suggested as contributing factors to the disaster. Additionally, the chaotic and sometimes contradictory communication with passengers about the severity of the situation fueled confusion and fear among those on board. Exploring these controversial theories offers insights into the complex chain of events that led to the Titanic's demise. While the ship's sinking resulted from a multitude of factors, these theories continue to be debated and scrutinized, adding layers of complexity to the enduring mystery of the Titanic. Investigations and Inquiries In the wake of the Titanic disaster, a series of investigations and inquiries were launched to determine the causes and responsibilities for the tragedy. One of the most prominent inquiries was the British Wreck Commissioner's Inquiry, which took place in London. This inquiry, led by Lord Mersey, sought to gather testimony from survivors, crew members, and experts to piece together the events leading to the Titanic sinking. A separate American inquiry, chaired by Senator William Alden Smith, was conducted in the United States. This inquiry involved questioning passengers, crew members, and White Star Line officials to uncover details about the disaster. The inquiries yielded several key findings and conclusions that shed light on the circumstances surrounding the Titanic disaster. It was established that the ship had collided with an iceberg and suffered catastrophic damage. The limited number of lifeboats on board was a significant concern, and it was revealed that many lifeboats were launched with fewer passengers than their capacity allowed. The inquiries also highlighted miscommunications, errors in judgment, and a lack of coordination in responding to the emergency. Captain Edward Smith's actions and decisions in the critical hours were scrutinized, as were the roles of other crew members, the changes in maritime regulations and safety measures. The Titanic disaster prompted sweeping changes in maritime regulations and safety measures. As a direct result of the inquiries, several significant reforms were implemented to prevent such a tragedy from occurring again. These included increased number of lifeboats. Regulations were revised to require ships to carry enough lifeboats for all passengers and crew on board. 24-7 radio monitoring. Radio operators on ships were mandated to maintain continuous radio communication and monitor distress signals at all times. Iceberg Patrols The International Ice Patrol was established to monitor icebergs in the North Atlantic, helping ships navigate safely through iceberg-prone areas. Safety Drills Mandatory lifeboat drills and safety procedures for passengers and crew became standard practice on all passenger ships. Watertight Bulkheads Improvements were made in the design and construction of watertight bulkheads to prevent the rapid flooding of multiple compartments. The Titanic disaster served as a wake-up call to the maritime industry, leading to significant advancements in ship safety and emergency response procedures. These changes aim to ensure that such a catastrophic loss of life would never occur again on the high seas. The sinking of the Titanic became a pivotal moment in the history of maritime safety, shaping regulations and practices that continue to safeguard ocean travelers to this day. Unsinkable Myths and Reality The notion of the Titanic being unsinkable was one of the most enduring and dangerous myths associated with the ship. This misconception stemmed from the ship's design and advanced safety features, including a series of watertight compartments. However, the Titanic's tragic fate dispelled this myth once and for all. The belief in the Titanic's invincibility not only led to complacency, but also affected the ship's preparedness for emergencies. Many passengers and crew members initially dismissed the severity of the situation, assuming that the ship's reputation for safety would guarantee their survival. The limitations of technology and design at the time. While the Titanic was a marvel of engineering for its era, 
it operated within the limitations of early 20th century technology and design. The ship's bulkheads, for instance, were not sealed at the top, allowing water to spill over from one compartment to another once the lower ones began flooding. Additionally, the lack of a double hull, common in modern ships, left the Titanic vulnerable to iceberg collisions. Furthermore, the absence of modern navigation aids, such as radar and satellite communication, made it challenging to detect and respond to potential hazards swiftly. These limitations underscored the need for continuous advancements in ship design and safety technology. Survivor Stories the survivors of the Titanic disaster left behind a treasure trove of personal accounts that provide poignant and harrowing insights into the events of that fateful night. Their stories offer a glimpse into the chaos, heroism, and heartbreak that unfolded as the ship sank. Lawrence Beasley. Beasley, a school teacher, penned The Loss of the SS Titanic, one of the earliest survivor accounts. He described the shock of the collision, the scramble for lifeboats, and the anguished cries of those left behind. Molly Brown Known as the unsinkable Molly Brown, she was a socialite and philanthropist. Her courage in the lifeboat and efforts to keep spirits up among survivors became legendary. Eva Hart As a child survivor, Eva Hart vividly recounted her experiences. Her story of being bundled into a lifeboat and hearing the ship's haunting final moments resonates with readers even today. Charles Lightaller. The Titanic's second officer, Lightaller, provided a unique perspective from a crew member's point of view. His account detailed the chaotic evacuation and the challenges faced by the ship's officers. Ruth Becker Blanchard, a survivor from third class, Blanchard's story shed light on the struggles of passengers in steerage and their efforts to reach the lifeboats. The psychological impact on survivors of the Titanic disaster was profound and long-lasting. Many carried survivors' guilt, haunted by the loss of loved ones and the feeling that they had cheated death. Nightmares, anxiety, and survivor syndrome were common among survivors, and some struggled to discuss their experiences for years. On the other hand, some survivors became advocates for maritime safety, sharing their stories to raise awareness about the lessons learned from the disaster. Their resilience and determination to prevent such tragedies from happening again played a crucial role in shaping the maritime industry safety reforms. The stories of Titanic survivors serve as a testament to the enduring human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. They remind us of the individual courage and resilience displayed on that ill-fated night and the lasting impact such an event can have on those who live through it. The story of the Titanic has left an indelible mark on popular culture, captivating audiences around the world for over a century. It has been the subject of numerous books, films, documentaries, and even stage productions each offering a unique perspective on the tragedy. Books. Countless books have been written about the Titanic, ranging from historical accounts and survivor memoirs to fictionalized retellings. Notable titles include Walter Lord's A Night to Remember, a seminal work that meticulously chronicles the sinking, and Robert Ballard's The Discovery of the Titanic, which documents the ship's rediscovery on the ocean floor. Films. Perhaps the most famous adaptation is James Cameron's 1997 blockbuster film, Titanic, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. This epic romance and disaster film achieved both critical acclaim and box office success, becoming one of the highest grossing movies of all time. It rekindled public interest in the Titanic story and introduced it to a new generation. Documentaries. The Titanic has also been the subject of numerous documentaries that explore various aspects of the disaster. Documentaries like Ghosts of the Abyss, directed by James Cameron, provide a close-up look at the Titanic wreck, while others delve into the historical context and investigations. 
The RMS Olympic and its relationship with the Titanic, as well as the controversies surrounding them, is a captivating chapter in maritime history. The unsinkable RMS Olympic, sibling of the Titanic. The RMS Olympic, often overshadowed by its infamous sister ship, the Titanic, has its own compelling story to tell. As one of the three Olympic-class ocean liners built by the White Star Line, the third being the Britannic, the Olympic was the first of the trio to set sail. A picture taken on March 6, 1912. Titanic, on the right, had to be pulled out of dry dock so that her sister Olympic, on the left, could have a propeller replaced. The Olympic, like the Titanic, was a remarkable feat of early 20th century engineering. The ships were designed to be luxurious and opulent, boasting innovative safety features, including watertight compartments. These Olympic-class liners were intended to capture the lucrative transatlantic passenger trade and establish the White Star Line as a dominant force in ocean travel. The sinking of the Titanic in April 1912 had profound implications for the Olympic. At the time, the Olympic was the only operational ship of its class. In the aftermath of the disaster, the White Star Line faced an immediate crisis. The Olympic, nearly identical to the Titanic in appearance, was often referred to as the unsinkable ship, a moniker that proved ironic given the Titanic's fate. Controversy and Conspiracy Theories In the wake of the Titanic's sinking, Conspiracy theories and controversies emerged regarding the two sister ships. Some theorists suggested that the White Star Line secretly switched the identities of the Olympic and the Titanic after the Olympic had suffered a collision with the HMS Hawk in 1911. This collision had caused significant damage to the Olympic's hull. Conspiracy proponents claimed that, rather than repairing the damaged Olympic, the White Star Line disguised it as the Titanic and deliberately sank it to collect the insurance money, as the Titanic was believed to be unsinkable. Investigative Findings Investigations into these claims did not find substantial evidence to support the conspiracy theories. While the Olympic did indeed suffer damage in the collision with the HMS Hawk, it underwent extensive repairs before returning to service. The Olympic enjoyed a long and successful career, serving through World War I and beyond. It was eventually retired in 1935, marking the end of an era in transatlantic travel. In summary, while the RMS Olympic had a complex relationship with the Titanic and was the subject of conspiracy theories, the available historical evidence does not support the notion that the Olympic was intentionally disguised as the Titanic. Instead, the two sister ships played distinct roles in the annals of maritime history, with the Titanic's tragedy forever eclipsing the remarkable but less tragic career of the Olympic. The Titanic tragedy serves as a somber reminder that even the most advanced technology and the grandest ambitions can be humbled by the forces of nature. Its legacy is etched not only in the history books, but also in the safety regulations and practices that have since transformed the maritime industry. Remembering the Titanic means honoring the lives lost and the lessons learned, ensuring that their sacrifices were not in vain. As we conclude our journey through the Titanic story, we are left with an enduring sense of reverence for those who were on board and a profound respect for the lessons that have shaped safer and more responsible navigation at sea. The Titanic may have met its tragic end, but its story continues to sail through time, reminding us of the remarkable, the flawed, and the heroic aspects of the human spirit. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the Titanic's history and legacy. If you found this exploration of the Titanic story engaging and informative, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating historical content. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the Titanic's enduring legacy and any other historical events or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. So don't forget to leave your comments down below. And as always, if you have any questions or want to continue the conversation, 
feel free to reach out. Until next time, keep exploring the depths of history. And remember, the story of the Titanic will forever remain a symbol of ambition, tragedy, and the enduring spirit of inquiry on the high seas.